you're voluntarily putting this thing and say what you want. People are like, well, I'm just having one drink or it's literally poison. And when you see somebody, Tom, stumbling and falling and we all point and we laugh like, ah, oh, look at him. he he's twisted, he's faded. No, no, he's poisoned. The silent killer that we never want to talk about, guys. Alcohol has become an absolute travesty, especially in America. It's the legal drug that ends up killing more people than most drugs combined. Drunk driving, it's crazy. But we're gonna be reacting today to PBD, talking about statistical analysis regarding the alcohol, alcohol epidemic. Should we drink? Should we not drink? Should we have one a week? Should we have five a week? Should we just completely abstain from this movement? But welcome back, guys. I'm Isaac. This is David. What's up? I haven't really struggled with alcohol much. I haven't on occasion, but I yeah. know you've struggled. Yeah, with and it I'm going to share later after PBD kind of goes through some of the stats, my personal journey of getting off the sauce, so to speak. The sauce. And just want to educate you guys and and let's begin a community discussion. What are your thoughts on alcohol? Do Americans drink too much? Yes, right? probably yes. Alcohol is driving a debate in Washington. A debate is opening in Washington, D.C. over federal dietary guidelines for alcohol consumption. Current guidelines suggest up to two drinks per day for men and one for women. But upcoming updates may recommend lower limits, Vinny. Uh -oh. The alcohol industry, backed by lobbyists and lawmakers like Representative Andy Barr, is challenging the pr proposed changes, arguing for decisions rooted in real science. The HHS panel which includes researchers like Tim Naimi, Jorgen Rem, Kevin Shield, support stricter guidelines citing evidence that any amount of alcohol can be harmful. Their research aligns with the World Health Organization stance that no amount of alcohol is safe. It's widely accepted that alcohol is a carcinogen, especially at higher consumption levels, said Christian Abnett of National Cancer Institute. Wow. Vinny, is this inspiring you to start drinking again at all? Or are you happy with the decision you made a year I'm, ago? I'm, I, it's crazy that you say that. I just, this morning before I walked in here, I was on a Manect and I was talking to this guy about just how besides God, besides going to church and and and, and following that, that path, mm. taking out alcohol is probably the best decision I've ever made in my life. I am now after a wow. year in, well, May, May 31st, Kelly's birthday was my one year mark. I am now just starting to get emotions back, like just wow. smiling throughout the day, Pat, wow. getting goosebumps, be, remembering everything, waking up in the morning. And I think, you know, throughout the day, every single one of us at home, you guys, we, we all try to avoid poison in the, in the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the food that we're eating. You're voluntarily putting this thing and say what you want. People are like, well, I'm just having one drink or it's literally poison. And when you see somebody, Tom, stumbling and falling and we all point and we laugh like, ah, oh, look, at he, he's twisted, he's faded. No, no, he's poisoned, but he doesn't have enough uh, to kill him. I mean, it's destroyed many people in my family's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm so happy that I broke out of it. But I think anything to try to limit it, because think about it, the government, it's legal and they want you to be drinking it. They, they want you to be smoking. They want you to, to be going down that path. I personally just think it's, I think it's a good thing to, to lessen anybody drinking, if, especially if it's, if it's poisoning you. How do you convince people not to drink much anymore? Because the people that go out every night, every weekend, they're mm -hmm. either addicted to it, so they need, they feel like they need it. Yeah. It's a social thing to do. And they're also talking about legislation, legis, legis, legislation, legislation that is going to lower the amount you can drink. So maybe instead of 0.08, it'll be 0.04. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't I, know. It's I not going to stop people. Just more people are going to get arrested. I can really, really uh, understand where Vinny's coming oh, from. Oh, I love what he said. Because what he said. It, it goes deeper than just legislation from a government. You're not going to change people's hearts with legislation. Prohibition, they tried that, didn't work, right? So anything the government tries to do to clamp down on an addictive pattern doesn't really change anything. It just yeah. makes people want to hide it or do it different ways. What it comes down to is the heart. And why do you drink? For me, I know when I struggled with alcohol, I was doing it to numb pain inside of me that I didn't want to deal with. So there was things in my own heart that was saying, that was crying out, Isaac, deal with this, get over this, move on. But I didn't know how to face it. And I think a lot of men specifically, when we have struggles in life, we don't know how to face it. So we go to other substances to numb the pain, to mask it. And guys, you don't have to do that. There is a better option. Living an alcohol-free lifestyle is a really good thing. And I can speak from experience now. I've been off the sauce now for about a week and a half, which is great. And I'm getting, getting better 
but it's a daily choice. You, you can't just decide, oh, I'm just gonna give it up forever and then do it without having to daily, make those daily decisions, not going to bars, not ha hanging out with the same group of friends that was trying yeah. to get you to drink. You told me that it's the first, this is the first time in five years that you actually feel calm. Calm and that you peace. actually have thoughts, you have peace, you actually yep. can think clearly and communicate yep. clearly without feeling some kind of anxiety, right? Yeah, because alcohol induces a lot of anxiety, especially when you drink alone. I think that's a lot of people struggle with that out there. And if you do, I definitely understand where you're coming from because I used to do that. You know, you can pound a six pack while you're watching a TV show on your bed or on your couch. And then before you know it, you're just absolutely hung over the next day. The older that you get, especially now that I'm 30, and as you get older, the hangovers are way more intense. It is drinking sucks. liquid. It's basically liquid poison at it the end of the sucks, day. It sucks, dude. That's why I never became an alcoholic. Yep. It's because my hangovers suck. Yeah. Like, talk about being in bed the whole next day yep. and feeling like death. Yeah. That's me. And so I've had periods of time where I drank more. I was a bartender for a yeah. while. But I always cut myself off before I could get to a point. I've been drunk, pro like, really drunk probably three times in my life. Yeah. And my wife hates it. You know, you're watching. She absolutely hates it. Yeah. But those moments she says, oh, I never want to have to deal with that again. Yeah. And the I'm, most and embarrassing moments of my life were when I was drinking. And I'm not saying that we're, I'm, we're not on this channel saying nobody should ever drink. No, right? we'll have a drink. Probably. We'll have a drink we'll have a once drink in a while, like a glass of wine. It's or, depending on it. It depends on, but on it. if you have people around you that struggle with that, don't enable the struggle. You yeah. know, don't give if somebody's trying to come off of something and you're a brother in arms or a sister in arms walk with them yeah. don't encourage that behavior because going to bars for the sake of going to bars is ridiculous just it's a to waste drink, of money it's a waste of money you're not going to meet the most wholesome of people you might have one out of the group that decides to be the dd and, right. and be a good person of moral character but i do believe that america is is starting to shift away from alcohol there's, there's a, a whole alcohol free movement alcohol free movement of people that used to always go to bars and they're trying to make not drinking alcohol kind of cool again. Yeah. You know? And so we've had a lot of people in our family that even going back, you know, in other generations that have died from it, yeah. that were so it runs addicted in the bloodline, yeah. It has run in our generational line a lot. Um, we've had closer family members that really struggle with it to a point where it, it's almost taken their life. And so we really treat alcohol very seriously. And we've had moments where we drank more than we should. Yeah, you know, we're not- We're not preaching we're not pre at you guys. We're not preaching or pretending to be but angels. We are. But we can see it for what it is. And yeah. it's okay to have a drink now and then, I think. It's okay yeah. to have a drink now and then. Yeah. But- when you get to a point where you have to keep drinking until you to feel, feel okay. peace, yeah. until you feel peace, because that was the thing. Whenever I drink a little too much, mm. I f get to that level where I'm like, oh, I finally have peace in my life. Yeah, You feel that, right? And you feel it for about an hour and a half, two and hours, then, unless you keep drinking. And then when you start to come down, you're like, oh, I hate my life. And then you don't yeah. want to do it anymore. Yeah. And it's just a cycle of, you know, the next two days you can't function. I mean, Vinny said that it took a year for him to get normal emotions back. Can you, you can imagine actually feel that? real joy to feel real joy to where because I've watched this entire thing. He goes on later and says that he actually could smile again. Isn't that Little crazy? things he could go outside and breathe the air and see, you know, just see birds flying, whatever it is, and actually have some semblance of peace. Yeah. That's massive, guys. So it's about learning what is your purpose, going on your purpose, not settling for less, but you have to understand what is hindering you from being able to get there. Yeah. And if something is literally hindering you and preventing you from being able to live a normal life and actually go after what you want, you got to cut it out just like that. And we're going to have viewers on this video that both, uh, you know, recovered from alcohol that and viewers that are struggling with alcohol. So I encourage you guys in the comments, go and actually tell your story. You know, where know. were you? We'll and the respond. thing about it is as well is that your story could change somebody's life. If you comment in, in this video, we do have a lot, we're getting more eyeballs as we continue to grow this channel. But if you share your story about how you got out of this addiction and how maybe if you believe in God that he brought you out, that could change somebody's life. They could read that comment and really start on a better path. You guys don't underestimate the beauty and also the reach of social media because it, it's changing the world.
It has, but we we love you guys. We appreciate Vinny for being vulnerable. But it's beautiful. I am curious to see what legislation. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see the legislation. Forward. It's not going to probably happen because all of the lobbyists and the special interest groups are not going to allow to be more uh, to have more laws against alcohol. No, all they're going to do is lower it from 0.08 yeah. to 0.04 maybe. But then you know what's going to happen? More people are going to go to jail. Yeah, because drinkers want to drink. So we love you guys. We'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Get off the sauce. Get off the sauce. Peace. Peace.